is it? Oh, it's Susan. Okay, it's Susan's fault. Get with the program, lady. It's Susan's fault. Good morning, everyone. So, I finally dropped my phone and it hit the right spot. You and the glass? Yeah, the glass is broken. And I've got this plastic coat. Well, it's, it's like a glass coat uh -huh. that you purchase to keep it from cracking the screen. And it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> it cracked the screen. So, I have no idea what's happening on the lower lower left hand side of my phone if anyone's even looking at Facebook right now is anyone there yeah Patty's there and she's here too <laughs> uh, a little time delay huh morning Facebook glad you could join us this Monday morning a lot going on right now um, as you heard there was a shooting in Las Vegas, um, not sure exactly who it was, uh, several rifles, rooms, from what I hear, but I'm sure news will come by as they find out more of what's going on. Good morning, Diana. I see your last name, but I don't see your first name on my screen. It's broken. So we have uh, some, we had a, a, well, we have a friend that went out there this weekend in Las Vegas, so they're safe and sound. And we're just glad for that, but also all the others that um, were there too. We're glad that God spared their lives. And for the families that um, lost loved ones, we're praying for them. Those that are wounded, we're praying for a quick recovery and, and hopefully some peace of mind as they go through all of that. Um, morning, Christina. I miss you. Hopefully you can make it one of these days here again. Um, <laughs> So we're praying for that. Virginia's on her way to the pastor's wife conference, so pray for her. Uh, she'll be uh, uh, there um, sitting at the feet of Jesus and just receiving from the Lord, and hopefully she'll come back refreshed. And so I get the duty of watching animals, taking care of them, feeding them, cleaning up after them. I don't know how I'll do that. I'm not an animal person. Wilbur, Wilbur last night almost attacked me as I went into his pen, and I don't know if you've seen Wilbur lately, but his tusks are like this big uh, coming out of the side, so I gotta watch out. She goes, just kinda shake the food off to the side and he'll follow the food and not your leg with this tusk. You know, I'm like, all right, great. <laughs> so, a lot going on here. So let's go ahead and open up our Bibles to Romans chapter 16. <clears throat> We have a short chapter. Who's that? Yvonne. Morning, Yvonne. And we had a, a great time for those of you that joined us on Saturday night for our spaghetti fundraiser for the Wattis family. Uh, the Lord just blessed. I think we, we made a little under $2,000 for them around there. Um, so, um, wow, that was far beyond we expected. And so... Um, the Lord really blessed, and we want to thank everyone that supported that, came out. We had a neat time. I don't know how many people we had, maybe 200 people or so that came out throughout the night. Mm -hmm. you know, there were different uh, phases as they came in uh, from 4.30 on till about 6.30, I think, or 7 even, till the food was almost all gone. So, so that was a, a neat night. So thank you for, for your support there and for them. They definitely needed it. So let's go ahead and pray, and we'll be in Romans chapter 16. Heavenly Father, we just come before you, Lord, as we begin this beautiful day that you have made. Lord, we pray for grace and mercy, Lord, upon us. Lord, we do lift up the families and those that were wounded. Uh, Father, in Las Vegas, we pray, Father, for healing. Father, we pray that you minister to them and that uh, you would just um, comfort them all through this time, Lord. And Lord, may they, may they find some peace in you, Lord. And, and may they realize that God has spared their lives, those who are wounded and those who survived the situation, Lord. And we just continue to pray that the grace of God would be revealed um, very clearly to all those involved with that situation, Father. We live in a very evil world, Lord. It's not getting better. I know we would like to think so. We would like to think that man's heart is good. The Bible says the opposite. It's only going to get worse. We're not evolving to a perfect specimen. Uh, we seem to be devolving to animals, Lord. And 
we need to wake up, Lord, and see that we need the scriptures once again. Even if we don't believe in God or Jesus, if you were just to read the scriptures and see, and it's a recorded history, and it tells you the facts of what happened and how people treated other people, but it also shows you how to live righteously, how to be a person of integrity when no one's around, to have character, to be honest, even just the Ten Commandments itself. Um, are good moral values for us to all take. I'm not suggesting you take it and have a false sense uh, of eternity, but they will give you a, a, a joyful life and a peaceful life in this world if you apply them to your lives. But ultimately, Lord, um, I pray that every man would come to know Jesus personally and trust in him alone for their salvation. So minister to us now, Lord, as in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Romans chapter 16. So I read it this morning and verses 1 all the way to 16. Paul is just praising God for all these people that were in his life. Uh, for instance, this first uh, woman, I commend to you Proby. And what he's saying here is that I want you to take my sister Proby, who is a servant of the church, uh, that you may receive her in the Lord in the manner worthy of the saints and assist her in whatever businesses she has need of, of you. For indeed, she has been a helper of many and of myself also. And then he goes on and talks about Priscilla, Aquila, um, how they risked their own neck for his life. Um, he talks about uh, Aphrodis, um and, and the fruit that came from them who believed even before he did. Mary, Androchus, uh, who were fellow prisoners, um, Amphilus, uh, Eurbus, verse 19, verse 10, Apello, uh, Actrobrilis, Herodion, Kingsmen, he calls them. And he lists all these people, and you just go, wow, Paul had, I'm not going to name them all, because I'll probably get them all wrong. <laughs> and you're saying, does this guy know how to read? Well, the answer is no, I don't. <laughs> not when it comes to these Greek names. <laughs> They're really hard to, to listen to. You know, I used to struggle with that, Lord. And I'd actually put parentheses and, and, and listen to the, the name uh, being voiced by someone educated. And then I'd spell it out the way that he's saying it so I get it right. And then I found out that they sometimes were wrong because you listen to someone else and they say it differently. So I'm like, oh, well, then you get, you get the point. It's a person <laughs> with a name. But it, it's interesting that he lists them all. And I just thought, you know, um, we want God to receive the glory, right, for everything that we do. We don't want the attaboys and the pats on the backs. Our hearts should not be one to, to expect that from one another is what I'm saying. Because if we're expecting that, then we're doing the things... Uh, that we do for other reasons than for the Lord and for the love of the Lord. We're expecting people to recognize us. We're expecting people to think, okay, he's a good guy because look at what he's doing. And, and those are not good reasons to do the things we do. We do things because we, we love Jesus and we want to love Jesus and, and just pay him back. But at the same time, if someone does come up to us and says, great job, you know, then that's okay. And that's what Paul's doing here. He's mentioning all these people by name, which says something about them, right? That they were helpful for him in the ministry. Uh, I go back to the Old Testament, and you, you look at David, and he lists his mighty men of valor. And these men were warriors. These guys were powerful. And they supported David 110%. Now, there, was a, there was a time when, when David went, went down to, uh, I believe it's Nabor, but don't correct me on that. Uh, don't trust me on that, but Abigail was his wife, and he wanted to go down there and get some food and supplies for his men. Well, <clears throat> Abigail comes to him in, 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 in um, representation of Nabor, and, and then tells David that my husband doesn't want you to do that, you know, so uh, he doesn't want to give you anything, you know, because you're a maniac or whatever. And so then David gets mad and he goes down there and, and he's going to, you know, kill, kill Nabor. And so you would think that that was silly of David to do. He should have just went on to the next town. Why is he bothering with that and so forth? And you would think that his men would say, well, David, 
why are you going to kill this guy just because he doesn't want to supply us food? But his men supported him 100%, no matter what he did. Uh, they were always there. Uh, these men were great warriors. Uh, I read the stories where they would fight for hours and hours and kill thousands of men, and their swords would be stuck to their hands, you know, just because of the, the battle that was in. They couldn't pry their hand open to remove the sword. But these guys supported... Um, David 110%. They were committed to David, just like these men were committed to Paul, <clears throat> the apostle. And that says something about their integrity and their character. I think of Pastor Chuck Smith, you know, the Calvary Chapel Association board right now, those men that are on that board that are overseeing the CCA that Chuck left to them. These men love Chuck, respected Chuck, and they're going to, to keep what Chuck has started going. That's a love. That's a commitment. It speaks to their character and their integrity. Do, do, do all men love men like that? No. Not all men do. They have their own agenda. They have their own ideas. And they will, <clears throat> they will part their ways. Abraham and Lot. Abraham and Lot. And Lot said, you know, my group is getting too big. And Abraham said, well, then you choose. Where do you want to go? And he chose Sodom and Gomorrah in that area and region. <clears throat> and he left. But it says something about you when you're committed to your pastor, to your minister, to your leader. Uh, I think of our church here. And I do think of all the people. I can go all the way back to day one, those that were there in, in the ministry in my house as we started a Bible study that were helping me set up the um, nonprofit status and helping me with the teaching of the children's and the setting up of chairs and all of them instrumental in starting this church, you know, <clears throat> that were committed. Some left, but some were still committed until the Lord moved them away. You know, and I think of today, all those that are here that are committed to this ministry. And I'm talking about the ones that, that have been here for a long time, like Patty, like Randy, you know, um, and others that I just can't think of right now, Mariana, um, that have been here for years and years, tens of years, you know, and have been committed to this ministry. Um, and then, of course, those that are here now that have been here for several years seem to be committed, you know, and only time will tell because sometimes things just don't work out, you know, for whatever reason. Uh, we, we get uh, offended by a word or whatever, and so then we decide that that's it, I'm done with it, you know. Sticks and stones will break my bones, you know, that type of thing. But names would never hurt me doesn't apply at that moment because we're offended and pride gets in there and no one should offend me and so forth. So, <clears throat> and they'll come and go. But Paul lists all these guys' names and I can list all the names that have been so instrumental in this ministry, you know. Um, and it's a blessing to praise God for all these guys because they are instrumental and you can't do it without them. Paul couldn't do it without, without these guys. In fact, one guy actually wrote this letter for him. You know, he, he dictated it, and this person wrote it down for him. So, so that's how instrumental they were with Paul. And then, now, and, and by the way, that's the character we should have. That's a godly character. Uh, we, we should be committed. That should be a part of our nature as Christians, committed. Committed to something, some cause, uh, some person, some ministry. It should be a commitment to us on our part, no matter what. No matter what, we're going we're gonna to get through it thick and thin. We're family. You know, wherever you go, I don't care if it's here or if it's another small church or even if it's a big church, you should be committed. You know, there was a family here at the spaghetti um, <clears throat> event and um, just wanted to see where they were at and where they were going. And, and they were going to another church. And I said, well, we don't want to take you away from that church. That's where God has you. So you stay there. Thanks you coming out, supporting this event, supporting the family. I really appreciate that, you know, but we don't want you to feel like we're trying to take you away from anyone because that's not what we want to do. What we're trying to do is reach the lost, people that don't know the Lord. We want to reach their hearts, get to them, and bring them into the kingdom of God. We don't want you jumping around from church to church to place to place just because you get upset or mad or angry or whatever. You know, we want you to be committed to a place, just like these men were committed to Paul. Now, they weren't all committed. Some of them went away. As I said, Barnabas and him split. Mark went with Barnabas, and they went their way. But isn't it interesting? You never hear about them any, anymore until later on. Mark, when he grew up and was mature and realized what commitment was, 
And Paul said, hey, I want him back in the ministry. And Paul's arms are always open, just like ours are too. But notice what he says uh, a, a, as a contrast to this type of characteristic, because this is the kind of characteristic we want as believers to be committed and live integrity. But then he goes on in verse 17 and says, now I urge you, brethren, note, write down, keep track, put in your email folders, <laughs> all these things. He says, brother, note those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learn. And it says, and avoid them. Avoid them, it says. All the way to verse 20. Look at, for those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own bellies. And by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. You know, those people that divide, they have such smooth words. They can say the right thing that make you feel like, man, that person is so wrong and they're so wrong. Oh, I need to leave too or I need to stop hanging around them because they're wicked. But in reality, the person that's telling you that is the one that's wrong. They're able to twist words. But don't you see by the very thing of them trying to do that to you shows you that they're wrong. Because the person that's just trying to live his life and serve the Lord, minding his own business, is the one that's right. Uh, years ago, uh, there there was a family here, and it ended up in divorce. And the wife actually went away, <clears throat> and the husband stayed here. And one day, the the wife ca uh, called me and said, Pastor Ruben, I, I want to sit down with you, and I want to talk to you about something. So so I'm okay. So we sat down, and she just she just bagged on her husband, just boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, well, you know, uh, now that you got it off your chest, I hope you feel better. Uh, your husband's not here to defend himself. I only hear one side of the story, but this is what I see. I see you gone. I see you took off. I see you're not going to church. I see you're not involved in any service or anything like that. You're just involved with yourself. But I see him here and committed and serving. So I'm going to support him. I'm going to back him. I'm going to pray for him and both of you and hope that you can reconcile and see your errors. But as far as I'm concerned, I see him doing everything he needs to do to, to, to keep in line with God. And you're not. So I'm going to support him. And I've always done that, whether male or female, is support the one that's trying. They're not perfect. And I'm sure that they did some mistakes in it. But they're trying to keep walking with the Lord. They're trying to keep their faith. They're not trying to stumble and get back into the world. And it says, avoid these guys, these people. Uh, verse 19, for your obedience has become known to all. Therefore, I am glad on your behalf, but I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace, which crushes Satan's, Satan under your foot shortly, uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. So he's saying, look, if these people are dividing, that's wrong. That's a bad character right off the bat. Don't even, it says, avoid them. And so you see these little posts on Facebook, you know, and says, well, I'm going through my friends list and I'm just deleting all the people that, you know, I need to avoid. Hey, that's biblical. If they're dividing and causing division, then yeah, it's time to avoid them. Take them off your list. That's what I do. And Facebook has a little feature there that you can unfriend them and they won't know that you unfriend them. You just won't get stuff from them anymore and they won't see your stuff. So it's very, it's very pleasant to do without trying to offend someone. It's just, I just don't need to see your stuff anymore. I need to move on. I got other things that I'd rather be doing than see your stuff. But there are people that just want to offend and want to tear down and want to divide and destroy. That's not what God wants at all. And he says, avoid those people. There's a saying that they, they say, and I, I was trying to think of it earlier this morning. You know, if you have people in your life that bring nothing but negative, then it's just time to get rid of them, you know, something like that. And, and I think there's some truth to that. Then he goes down and he commends more. Verse 21, Timothy, my fellow worker, Lucas, Jason, uh, so for Parter, my kinsman greet you. Tert, uh, Tertius, uh, who wrote this epistle, greets you. Gaius, my host, and the host of the whole church greets you. And he goes on and on and on and on and on. So, so all these guys are instrumental in his uh, walk. And then he comes to verse 25, and he just kind of ends this whole uh, book in Romans with, Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. 
And, and so being established, being on a solid foundation. Um, no, I'm not going to go that way. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus gave a, a, a parable. You know, if you build upon wood and stubble, it's not a very good foundation. Uh, you want to have a good foundation. You want to have cement. You got rock, solid, so it's not going to be unmovable. Uh, and he, of course, he's talking about the doctrine, the gospel message. Uh, and the simple gospel message is this. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And if you do that, then you fulfill the whole law. That's the gospel message. So if you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, then you're not going to get involved in drugs. You're not going to get involved with uh, shady things, you know, shady deals, <laughs> you know, shady people, you know, shady places. You know, you're going to stay away from that stuff, and, and you're going to lay everything on a solid foundation. You know, that is Jesus Christ, his church, getting involved with ministries like this. I had a blast I had a blast on, on Saturday night. It was neat seeing everybody here, eating together, fellowshipping, talking with one another. That's a blast. That's better than Disneyland. Mm -hmm. You know, that was better than Disneyland for me. I mean, Disneyland's a fun place to be, and, and I'm not saying that, that, that Disneyland isn't a fun place. Or Knott's Berry Farm. I love Knott's Berry Farm. I like going to Knott's Berry Farm and spending time in Old Town when the cowboys come out with their guns and they fight each other, you know, and they, they shoot each other from the roof and they fall to the ground, and that's exciting. I'll just sit there and eat all day to wait for the next show to come out, you know, then, then the rides and, and so forth. I mean, I'm not saying that that stuff isn't fun. It definitely is fun, and it does take your mind off of life because life can, you know, be a struggle at times, and it's just time to get away, go to the beach, go to the mountains and places. I'm not saying that, that we can't do that, but we should enjoy the things of the Lord too the fellowships and so forth. Even the cleaning up. You know, I like the cleaning up. I like the cleaning up and the setting up because it's like little ants. You know, if you ever watch it, they're little ants setting everything up in certain orders and places and people working their way, pulling stuff from outside into inside and then from bathrooms and, and, and uh, sanctuaries into kitchens and then everyone's washing. And it's just, it's such a beautiful thing to see happening because they're all serving the Lord. And they're all talking. And once in a while they'll stop and they'll laugh at each other and say some things and they get back to, to working. That's, that's fun. That's some, some great stuff. So being established, you know, is important in the Lord, first of all, in your relationship with Him. Also in a church with good godly people that are going to keep you on track and keep you accountable. Um, that's what accountability is. Uh, my granddaughter was sharing with me small, small... Um, Small studies, you know, little groups are, are wonderful because you have a small group, a little group, and you can keep each other accountable. Uh, she wants to see that in, in, in churches. <clears throat> she would think that that will help churches keep people accountable, and it does to a certain degree. But those are the things that establish you, as he said in the gospel. And then verse 26, but now has made manifest and by the prophetic scriptures has been made known to all nations according to the commandment of the everlasting God for obedience to faith. And of course, obedience to faith. And that's the works, obedience to faith. So where's your faith? It's in the obedience. How do I know I'm saved? Because you're obedient to the gospel message and it is your faith that saves you. So when James talks about faith, he says faith, uh, faith that, that is workless is dead. Just as a man without a spirit or soul is dead so is faith without any works. So Paul here says and confirms with James that obedience through faith, that's how the gospel is apprehended by an individual. To God alone, wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Amen. What a great book this was, wasn't it? Yeah. It's a great book. A lot of people like Romans. I do not like Romans. <laughs> it's a hard book for me. Uh, to really grasp, there's a lot of, a lot of things in there that I, I want to go back over and just really study, I, especially when you're giving a Devo like this. Um, it's like a quick overview, and you just want to touch on some things and move on, and it, I just want to stop for a while and, and look at that, and what is he talking about, and I want to look at the Old Testament and New Testament and really figure it out, so it's a hard book for me. So Corinthians will begin uh, this coming Wednesday. Thank you for joining us. If you have any prayer requests, please uh, post them or private message me, and we'll pray for you as we pray here after this message. 
uh, continue to pray for us. The Lord is good, and we're just expecting good things. Hey, I just want to throw this out at you. For those of you that are out there, um, we are pretty much done with our modular unit for the classrooms, but we cannot use them yet until we get the ramp up. We purchased a ramp from, from a guy, um, but he hasn't been able to install it. So if there's anyone out there that has experience in installing ramps on modular units, and this is a modular unit that you see either at a school or, or on, a, on a construction site, and it has a ramp and it's got to be a certain pitch, uh, you know, an angle that, that you know, qualifies for the city because that's the last thing they're waiting for to inspect. So if you know of anybody that would like to either donate their time or if they uh, uh, want to get paid then you know get, have them give us a call or private uh, message me and I'll get their number and give them a call so we can get this classrooms going for the kids the kids are excited about it and we'd like to get them in into these classrooms and it's been years and we're just waiting on the Lord to to do this a lot of opposition a lot of attacks of the enemy um, but we're we're really close and so we need a little help and so I'm just crying out to God's people out there if they know of anyone that knows how to do that, um, send them our way. God bless you, and we'll see you Wednesday.